In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low-level design coding question, which is design a locker allocation system. So let's jump in. Firstly, we're going to need to support lockers of various sizes. Each locker can also be empty or occupied. And given a package size, we must pick the smallest empty locker whose size is greater than or equal to the package size. And this is the core of the solution, is to make sure our algorithm to find the next locker size is as efficient as possible. And finally, we also need to be able to release lockers and check their occupied status. So here we have the description on the left and the code on the right. So before jumping into the code, we're just going to have a deeper look in this description so we know what we're doing. So this is what we saw earlier, supporting various locker sizes, empty or occupied. The package size must be the smallest empty locker, whose size is greater than or equal to the package size, and then also the releasing of lockers to check their occupied status. So the methods we're going to need to implement is firstly the locker. We need to initialize that, so that'll take a locker ID and a size, which would be a number. Then we'll also need to initialize a package, so that'll take a package ID and a size. And then for a pickup location, so a pickup location is essentially just a set of lockers. And so that will take an array of tuples which will contain a string and a number the string being the locker id and the number being the size and all lockers will start out as empty we'll also need to implement a find and allocate method that takes a package id as a string and a package size as a number and so this will return the id of the smallest empty locker whose size is greater than or equal to the package size and it will also insert that package into that locker and so again the key thing here is we need to select the most frequently freed or inserted uh, locker if there is a tie between locker sizes and we can return null if no lockers exist next is the release locker method which takes the locker id as a string and returns a boolean so if the locker id exists and is occupied we then free it and return true otherwise we can return false and then we also have the check locker status method which takes the locker id as a string and returns a boolean so return true if the locker id exists and is occupied otherwise return false so I think the best way to get an idea is just simply walk through this example. So on the first line of the input is the methods that are being called. And on the second line are the parameters that are being called with that method. So here we've got our pickup location initialization. So that's going to take again our list of locker IDs and their sizes. So we've got locker L1 for locker ID 1 and its size of 10, L2 with the size of 10 and L3 in a size of 20. Then we want to find and allocate. So we want to allocate this package ID of P100 that has a size of 9. And similarly, we also want to find and allocate a package of P101 with the size of 10. And then we want to release locker. So we'll release locker 2. And then we want to find and allocate again package 102 with the size of 15. And then finally, we want to check the locker status of L3. So there's the output. But if we look at the explanation here, we can see here we're firstly initializing our lockers. Then we're going to find and allocate. So again, P100 with the size of 9. So we've got L1 and L2 here, both of size of 10, so they'll both work. But again, we want to pick the most frequently added or freed. So in this case, we're going to choose L2. So that's why we return L2. Then for finding and allocating the package 101 with the size of 10, again, we only have L1, so therefore we'll return that. Then we're going to release locker 2. So this will just simply return true because it was occupied and now we're releasing it. Then we want to find and allocate package 102 which has a size of 15 well the only uh, locker that can support that is l3 which has a size of 20 and then we want to check the locker status of l3 and this returns true because it is occupied so hopefully that makes sense but i think when we go through the code it'll be much clearer so the locker has an id a fixed size and a boolean occupied which indicates whether it's holding a package or not so super straightforward and similarly a package has an id and a size as well so now looking at the pickup location in the constructor we will receive a list of locker objects so the locker is map is used to store a locker id and so that we can have an o of one lookup to that locker object we also have an available which is a dictionary key by size each pointing to a list of empty locker ids and this is going to be super important for getting that next available locker then we have the sizes which is a sorted list of the distinct sizes that currently have at least one empty locker and then we also have allocated which tracks which packages occupies which locker and then once we have that we simply build the available buckets and the sorted sizes list so we iterate over all of the lockers and then we add the locker size as the key and then we simply append the locker id to that uh, array and then for the sizes simply get all the keys that are in the uh, available map and sort them in order so our sizes are sorted. So in our find and allocate method we're going to use bisect left to get the index of the smallest package that is greater than or equal to the package size and so just for a quick visual on how bisect left works of lockers of size 10, 20 and 50 
and then we've got a package nine. So what it will do is it will return the index at zero because 10 is the first element that is greater than or equal to nine and it is at index zero within that lockers array. And then let's say we have 10, again, same thing, we will return zero because 10 in the size 10 locker is the nearest locker that is greater than or equal to our package of size 10. Then let's say we have a package of size 15. Well, we will return an index of one because that is where 20 is located in the lockers array. And then let's say we have 45. Again, we can return an index of two because that is where the locker of size 50 is in the array. But then let's say we have 60. So 60 is greater than all of the elements uh, in our lockers array. And so we can return an index of three. So this index is out of range. And so that's how we know no locker uh, can fit our package. And so there here in the code you can see, so if the index is equal to the length of the uh, size array, uh, we can just return none as no available locker is big enough. So otherwise, if the package can fit, we get the chosen size from the sizes array, and then we get the locker list from the available mapping. And then we can get the locker ID by popping off the locker list. And again, we're doing that LIFO last in first out. So now that we've popped off the list, if that locker list is now empty, what we wanna do is remove that bucket from available and then remove that size from sizes as well. And then finally, what we wanna do is just simply mark the chosen locker as occupied and record its allocation. So again, this is probably the most complex method that makes use of all the methods, but once you see it once, it should make sense. But I think the key thing is just seeing it once. And once you understand how all the data structures work together, I think it becomes Become super simple to understand. So looking at the release locker method, we first look up locker ID in the lockers map. And if it doesn't exist or it is already empty, we return false. Otherwise we mark occupied as false and remove it from allocated. And so if there's already a bucket for that size in available, we just simply append to it. Otherwise we create a new bucket and insert that size back into the sorted sizes list using bisect in sort. And then finally we just return true. And then lastly, for the check locker status method, all we do is a simple dictionary lookup that tells us if the locker is occupied true or if it's empty or invalid false. So let's run our code now and see if it works. Perfect, the initial test case is passing. So let's submit it and see if it passes all tests. Perfect, all the tests are passing. So let's look at the time and space complexity. So you can see for the time complexity for the find and allocate method, we have O log N for that binary search plus list operations. For release locker, we've got O log N as well for the binary insertion to maintain that sorted order. And for the check locker status, it's simply O of one for that hash map lookup. And again, N represents the number of lockers. And then for the space complexity, it is also just O of N. And so that kind of that core bottleneck is maintaining this sorted sizes list, which requires O log N uh, operations for insert removal. So again, I think the core part of this algorithm is just understanding what these core data structures are doing and how they interact. But once I think you see it once, it makes everything a lot simpler to understand. So if you want to test yourself against this question, there's a link in the description. And if you got any value out of this, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot. And I will see you in the next one.